and a happy holiday weekend. Glad that you've come to be with us this morning. Hope you had a good time on Thanksgiving last Thursday. Hope you survived Black Friday. And uh, now it's time to relax and to fill our hearts with the Lord as we come into his presence for worship. Welcome. Thursday may have been the Thanksgiving holiday with all of the turkey and the stuffing and the green beans and the dressing and all of the pies and desserts, but that Thanksgiving does not compare to the little meal that we're about to partake in now, the Eucharist, the Thanksgiving, the Lord's Supper. Let's give thanks for the bread. Lord God, King of the universe, our hearts are filled with joy. You've taken our sins away and you've set our feet on the right path to glory. Thank you, Father, for the hope that fills our hearts. May we partake of this meal in a worthy manner. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Likewise, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine, which represents the life of your dear Son. And as we drink it now, we drink it not only in his memory, but also with the promise that we can walk in his footsteps and that your spirit will strengthen us, that we can live in a worthy manner, that we can bring glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How often is the solution to our troubles just out of reach? How often are we so wrapped up in ourselves that we fail to see God's salvation just a stone's throw away? We begin our lesson this morning by thinking about Hagar, a mother out in the wilderness, the desperate desert and she's there with her son. They've lost all hope. Their provisions are gone. Their water is gone. And Hagar can't, can't bear to watch her son die in that piercing desert heat. As the sun beats down mercilessly, she would be crying, but she has no tears left. It's a disaster. Well, it all began in chapter 16 and in verse uh, chapter 21 and in verses 14 through 21, we read, so Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. Now, Hagar was the surrogate mother. It seems that Abraham and Sarah heard the promise of God that they would have a child, but they, they couldn't see how God could overcome biology, and, and so they did something that seems rather modern. Sarah brought Hagar, her, her handmaiden, to Abraham to be a surrogate mother, and so Hagar becomes pregnant. But it wasn't an act of faith. Sarah would have a child, Isaac, but that story is still, still to come. It seems that Hagar becomes pregnant and, and she has a baby and, and she feels the, the love of Abraham for the child and by extension for her. And she begins to be puffed up with pride and, and so she turns to Abraham and, and wants Abraham to send the woman and her child away. Can you imagine how Abraham felt he's torn up inside? He loves his son, that little baby boy. After all these years, he has a child, a little boy of his own, and the two of them would have played together. Abraham would have taught him how to toss 
rocks and sticks and, and to hunt and to wander in the wilderness, to, to take care of the sheep, all of the things that fathers love with their sons. And now he's forced to send Hagar and the boy away. It's a, an incredible tragedy. The boy is now a teenager. They've been together for over a decade. God confirms Sarah's wish. Abraham must send Hagar and Ishmael away, never to see them again. Can you imagine how Abraham felt? And when Abraham sends Hagar back to her people in Egypt, they've got to cross the, the desert of Sinai. And Abraham must have made sure that they had plenty of food and plenty of water to make that trip. But now can you imagine Hagar's heart? She's, she's torn inside. Why is this happening? Woe is me. Instead of turning to the Lord, she's turned in on herself. And that is never a good sign. So we can see her pick up the water. We can see her pick up the bread. We can see her with her son as they begin that journey to Egypt. And Abraham is there watching as they disappear over the horizon. He, he sends them along with his prayers. He's concerned, but he knows that God will watch over her. Sadly, Hagar doesn't have that same faith. The scripture says, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. She doesn't walk purposefully to get across the danger zone. Uh, her, her eyes are filled with tears, and she goes to the left and the right. She becomes confused. She becomes lost. And when the water in the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes, and then she went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. Now, who did she lift her voice to? It was a pity party, and she gave herself fully to it. She couldn't even give the last measure of comfort to her son. She just abandons him in the in the sparse shade of a bush, not even a tree. And she goes and she gives herself completely to her despair. Notice carefully the wording of verse 17. And God heard the voice of the boy. Abraham taught his son well. He didn't just teach him how to throw rocks, how to hunt, how to tend sheep, but he taught his son faith in the Lord. He taught his boy how to pray. And in this desperate situation, Ishmael prays to the Lord and the Lord hears his prayer. And the angel of God, we read, called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what troubles you, Hagar? That seems like a silly question, doesn't it? He's basically getting Hagar to pay attention. What would you do if in the middle of your pity party, in, in the midst of your despair, you heard a voice from heaven? What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is, not where you are. Up. Lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him, from the land of Egypt. So what happened in the wilderness? Hagar gave up and turned in on herself. That's not the Christian way. You may be having troubles this morning. Indeed, we're, we're all surrounded with this 
pandemic and chaos. The economy is in trouble. There, there are issues all around us. We're so tired of having to wear those masks and stay by ourselves. Uh, uh, why can't I be with my family? Why can't I see my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren? Why can't I be with my friends? Why can't things be like they used to be? And we turn in on ourselves and we're wrapped up in a pity party. And when we give up and turn in on ourselves, it only leads to despair. God heard Ishmael's prayers. In contrast to his mother, Ishmael turned to the Lord. Oh, that we had the faith of a child. So often, as we grow older, as we get some silver hair, we've seen things and we know the way of the world and we're not terribly impressed with it. But a childlike faith is what's called for. The childlike faith knows that God is here with us. And God hears the prayer of a child. And God will hear our prayers when they're offered in childlike faith. Question. What troubles you, Hagar? When we're in the middle of a pity party, we need to stop and ask ourselves serious questions. What's really the problem? What's going on in our heart that is separating us from God? Hagar's salvation was less than a bow shot away, but her eyes were so filled with tears, she was so turned in on herself that she didn't even see that the Lord had provided a spring of water. We need to remember God's promises. God will always be with us. Do you remember chapter 16? God will make a great nation out of Ishmael. And so God opened Hagar's eyes. The salvation is right there. How often is the solution just out of reach. If only we would open our eyes instead of turning in and tying ourselves down. If we stand up, get out of bed, get to work, and praise God, the solutions are right there. The Lord is faithful. He will not abandon us. Now, I think that this is very important. As we read this story, it's Ishmael who prays to the Lord but God didn't speak directly to Ishmael. He didn't say, Ishmael, get up, go give your mama a drink, take care of her. How would that have affected Hagar? Instead, God used the natural order of things, and he spoke to Hagar. Her heart was the one that needed to be turned back to God. Ishmael already believed in the Lord and trusted the Lord like Abraham, his father, had taught him. It was Hagar that needed faith. It was Hagar's eyes that needed to be opened. It was Hagar who needed to get up and get to work. And so Hagar gets up. She takes that empty water skin and fills it with the cool water that God provides. Can you taste it? Have you been out on a hot day? Your throat is parched. Your mouth is dry. And then there's nothing like an ice-cold glass of water to refresh your, refresh your spirit, refresh your body. Can you feel it dribbling down your chin, soaked? Did they throw the water on their hair? Did they celebrate and laugh together? Hagar ministered to her son, and when we're in the middle of a pity party, we need to get up and minister to others to find the joy of the Lord. It's been wonderful to be here today to, to praise the Lord. And if you're feeling a, a little post-holiday depression, if you're sad, don't give up. Learn the lesson of Ishmael and Hagar and turn to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God, King of the universe, we lift our hands and our hearts to you, praying for times of refreshing. These are hard for many of us, Lord. The holidays have passed and perhaps we've focused on what we've missed 
what didn't happen this year. And Father, let us instead open up our eyes and see your salvation, to feel your love, to feel the cleansing, refreshment of your spirit. As we leave this place today, we ask that we go with you. And as Hagar took Ishmael's hand, we pray, Father, that you'll take our hand and lead us on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.